Now we're all familiar with races like half orcs and half elves, which are ultimately the result of two other races coming together to create a child, which usually results in something similar to both parents, but kind of different and new and their own thing. And today's creature is no different. However, what is different about today's creature is that it asks the question, what happens when two very powerful individuals belonging to two very different races come together and create something new. Without getting into the nitty gritty of it, when a devil and a fae love each other very much, etc, etc, they ultimately on rare occasions can have a child that mixes both fae and fiendish ancestry into one. Hello and welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of D&D and other tabletop games and bring them to light and convert them for use in your current 5th edition D&D game. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are talking about the Forlaren. These creatures are a mix of this strange, sometimes kind, alien nature of the Feywild and the fiendish brutality of the Nine Hells. And unlike most mortal races that are a result of two other mortal races cohorting with one another, these half-breeds are extremely unique. Clocking in at a challenge rating of two, they make a perfect addition to any low-level game or can even be used as an interesting plot device later on down the road. And of course, they ask many questions about the world, the answers to which I find really interesting. So today we're going to talk about just exactly what these things can do in combat, and then we're going to talk about some plot hooks and various ways that you might want to use them in your D&D campaign. But first things first, we need to understand exactly how these things fight if it does come down to that. So we're going to take a look at some... So as I mentioned, the Forlaren kind of pick up a slew of abilities from both sides of their family tree. From their fey side, they gain resistance to all damage from piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning weapons unless those weapons are magical and made of silver. And from their fiendish side, they gain resistance to fire damage and the ability to cast some spells such as Firebolt, Heat Metal, and Hellish Rebuke. This is all they really have in terms of extraordinary abilities or defenses, because when it comes down to it, their main attack is just going to be done with their claws. They do have multi-attack, so they can attack twice per turn, but ultimately when it comes to combat, they are going to be either casting spells or trying to claw their target to death. And if they do actually manage to kill someone or knock them down to zero hit points, at least a very interesting thing happens. See, as weird as a Forlaren is, it doesn't see itself as normal like most odd creatures probably would. It knows that it comes from two very conflicting worlds and it kind of struggles with that identity. And not just in the capacity where its thoughts and feelings about itself can change one way or the other, it literally has a hard time grappling with its dual natures and what it is driven to do at any given moment. Because when it kills a creature, the Forlaren has to make a wisdom save. And if it fails that wisdom save, it becomes remorseful for what it's just done. It recoils back from the creature it's just killed and it is stunned for its next entire turn. However, the turn after it's stunned, so when it comes back into the fight, it comes back in with a renewed rage, almost as if it's angry at itself for even feeling that way, and all of its attacks have advantage for that turn and deal a little bit of extra fire damage. So fighting this thing in battle is sure to be a very interesting encounter anyways, and it's definitely going to be a roller coaster one way or the other. But as I said, these guys are only CR2, so that kind of sums up all this creature can actually do mechanically in combat. So let's take a moment and talk about some... So as it is reflected in the remorse trait that all Forlaren have, they are extremely volatile and literally of two worlds and two minds. They struggle with this conflict of identity and aren't sure whether they should seek to dominate and destroy as many fiends do, or if they should seek to nurture and be kind or caring as some fey do. Even if the fey parent in question of this Forlaren was particularly evil, its outlook on the world is still going to be very different from that of, say, a pit fiend. Because fey do inherently have a very intense connection with nature a lot of the times, 
and that could very well influence the way it acts as well. So for this reason, the Forlaren are hated by both fiendish and fae society. They don't really belong anywhere, and both of those different groups of people are likely to cast them out or straight up kill them if they discover this creature's existence. Because even from birth, a Forlaren can be very unpredictable and quite vicious. So there are a lot of circumstances that can arise from one of these things being born. Maybe the parents try to actually protect it and they elope together, which would be a really interesting encounter for your party to come across. Just this family that's made up of their Forlaren child and a fae and fiendish parents. Or maybe out of the two parents, one of them leaves and the one that ends up giving birth to this thing ends up being killed by the Forlaren if it's not a particularly powerful fae or fiend. Or maybe the parents kind of agree with their respective societies, regret what they've done, and they just abandon the child out in the wilderness, either out of fear of what it could do to them, what it could do to their reputations, or just out of fear that they themselves may be cast out for even having this creature and engaging in this forbidden union. I mean, that right there could be a plot hook where the players have the option to help a pair of fey and fiendish parents who are trying to escape from their respective cultures. But at the end of the day, the sad reality is that most of these creatures do end up orphaned, and that kind of brings us to where the party will most likely come across a Forlaren. See, despite the fact that these things can live over a hundred years easily, they often don't see 10 years old because they grow up very fast within a year and they're extremely violent, often attacking those who come across them. And that's absolutely how you could use one of these things just as a random encounter that your party comes across while they're encroaching the Wilderlands around the Feywild or something like that and would just be a little interesting bit of lore history and could potentially be a cool encounter as well. But if you want to go for something more nuanced and more roleplay heavy, maybe the players can try to find a way to convince this thing that they're not out to kill it and they might have an NPC ally in their midst. A Forlaren is definitely a huge chaotic monkey wrench to throw into any party composition, but it could be interesting to travel with for a while. Maybe they try to help find its parents or rescue them who were separated or taken away from them for some reason, or maybe they simply help it find a place where it can live peacefully for the rest of its life. Or maybe it simply joins the party on their adventure as kind of a sidekick just because they're the only people who have ever been nice to it and didn't kill it on sight. I mean, you could even take a Forlaren who maybe survived a few dozen years and is a bit older and wiser and has learned to control its inner turmoil a little bit better and make them an NPC with class levels. Because they are such a low CR creature, you could have one of these things that's maybe a level 10 wizard on top of that, or a level 10 rogue, or something like that. Maybe they're leading up a thieves guild, who knows what they're doing. But whatever odd little niche in society they've been able to find, they've taken a long time to kind of carve that space out in the world for themselves. And I feel like that would be an awesome backstory either for a helpful NPC or for a big villain. If they are a villain, maybe the reason why they're serving the big major villain of your campaign is because that villain was the only one who really accepted them and took them in and helped train them very Sith-like. And another thing worth noting here as well is that they do gain a lot of fire-based spells and abilities from having one fiendish parents, but as we know, not all fiends are fire-related. Maybe that parent was an ice devil or something else. There's a couple ways you can solve this. You can literally just swap out the damage type that those spells do. Maybe their version of Hellish Rebuke does cold damage, or their version of Heat Metal causes the metal to become extremely freezing and does freezing cold damage. Or maybe instead of a Firebolt, their Firebolt does lightning damage. Really easy to swap out. But if you wanted to, you could also just find other spells that are more thematic and literally built to be of that damage type and assign those. So instead of Firebolt, it has Frostbolt. If you want to up the CR a bit, maybe instead of Heat Metal, it has Cone of Cold. Things like that. And if you like this concept for a creature, but your party's way too high level to even have it be a legitimate threat in your game, you could always make a version of this creature that is much higher level. Maybe this Forlaren was born between the union of a powerful Arch Fiend and some kind of Arch Fae. A creature born to two parents like that would not only be extremely scandalous and extremely interesting from a political point of view for both cultures, but would also probably be a very threatening and powerful entity. Maybe the party even gets offered a contract from one of the Fey courts or from a fiendish patron that is willing to give them a huge reward for going out and taking this thing down before it becomes too powerful. 
But at the end of the day, however you choose to use this thing, I think it offers a lot of really interesting insight into a world we don't normally gain a lot of access to, and it could be a really fun creature just to run as a straight up enemy combatant. If you do like this monster and you want to use it, you can find a link to the stat block complete for 5th edition in the form of a Google document in the description below. Everything you need to run this creature is right there. And if you are one of my awesome patrons, you can find a link to the monster manual style D&D stat block on the Patreon page. Page. If you're not already one of my patrons, it is a fantastic way to support the show. And you get cool stat blocks made up for you. You get previews of what's coming up in the next week or so with Monster of the Week and other videos. And I'm also working on a new supplement now for the DMs Guild that's going to have a new subclass for every class. And all the playtesting material is being published on my Patreon as well. But if you still want to support the channel and you don't have the extra cash to throw around for Patreon, subscribing is the easiest and freest way to do that. And it helps me out a ton. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you've got any monster monsters from older versions of the game that you'd like to see covered in future videos, please leave a comment, get at me on Discord, tweet at me on Twitter, whatever your preferred method of communication is, and I will find that suggestion and add it to the list. So that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, 